I was the murderess. You killed Lola Dean, didn't you? No. There's a scene, and it's a two-shot, and she realizes that she might as well confess. I killed Lola Dean. I killed the butler, too. I wanted to go to the American Academy of Dramatic Art. And uh, my mother said, well, you can certainly do that, but you have to get the BA degree, too. So I went to the American Academy. And now at that time, when you finished your junior class, you had to do two or three different roles. You, could, you did a leading role, you did a supporting role, and you did a character part. And um, then you were judged, and um, you were either dropped or you were invited back. And um, in my class, uh, Hume Cronin and Betty Field and I were the only ones who were invited back. I came to disfigure her. When Mrs. Whitman arrived at the hotel and I saw what happened, I realized that Jean was going to ruin her life, the same as she'd ruined mine. All the hate I'd felt came back to me. Everybody that I knew wanted to go to California. All the men wanted to go to California. So I tested with all of the, my friends. Finally, I was making a test with uh, this one chap. The um, Warner Brothers gal came over to me and said, would you please sign a release form? And I said, well, I haven't had to do that with any of these people that I've helped. And, and uh, she said, uh, well, we've got a new thing going and uh, Warner Brothers insists that you sign. And when she gave me this paper, I looked at it and uh, the first column in it was what you would be paid if this option was exercised. Goodness gracious, you started with $115 and then you went up. I said to her, look, uh, I haven't had to sign one of these before and, and I don't like this. And she said, oh, we'll just change anything you want to do. So I thought, well, the best way to avoid having them pick up this option is to increase the pay. So I went from what was the $115 that they were to get, I went up to $1,200. And um, I was sure that that would, you know, avoid any problems. And um, I filled out all the thing and signed it. And then I went up to Ivoryton to do a season of stock. We were rehearsing. Then the phone rang this one day, and um, it was for me. And I went down to the, in the summer theater where there was one telephone, and it was in the box office. And um, so I went into the box office, and this voice said, uh, Hello there. Uh, this is Max Arno. I'm with the talent uh, head at Warner Brothers. I just wanted you to know that we have exercised your option. And I said, and this is a very bad joke. When I got to California, so I am coming off the plane, all of a sudden as I stepped up on the landing, this voice said, uh, 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 Miss Lindacar, I'm from uh, Warner Brothers, and they said, uh, you have to go out to the studio. Max Arno is waiting to see you. We went out to the studio, and uh, I went straight to Max Arno's office. From Max Arno's office, I went to the wardrobe department where they 
fitted out a metal form that they would keep in the, in the workroom so that I didn't have to come to so many fittings. I went to every place in the studio. I didn't know where I was going to stay. Finally, they did send me over the, to the Chateau Elysee and uh, met everybody connected with the film, which was going to start the next day, the murder of Dr. Harrigan. I really got rushed into the industry, and everybody was absolutely wonderful to me. I am here. I am here. I was a vision, and the thing was that they put me on this platform and got a hood around my face. I w looked through a hole in this black background. There was only one thing wrong with it. When they called lunch, they forgot to get me out. She is one of us. You must not interfere with her work. When I was doing the films at Fox, what you did was listen to everybody, if you were at all smart. You listened to everybody, you watched everybody, and you tried to learn what the business of being a motion picture actress was about. Excuse, please, you were speaking when Lady interrupted. I was just going to say that I found a pair of desk shears exactly like those in my room tonight. I had written a screenplay, and I enjoyed it. I got it together, and uh, then we were having a reading in order to get somebody to finance this. I was telling the story, and um, I said, all of a sudden, this blob began to move. And uh, he interrupted, and he said, the blob, that's the title. And that's how it got the title. <laughs> They're still applauding. Aren't you going to do an encore? I established my real importance to the motion picture industry. And that was that I could scream. Where is your mind tonight? It said in the script, she screams. So I screamed. And the sound man came up to me afterwards and said, um, could you give me some of the, do you do, do you do other kinds of screams? I said, well, whatever I'm supposed to do. He said, well, could you leave me some screams? And uh, I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. So at lunchtime, I left him some screams. And from that time on, every time I went on the set, the first thing the sound man did was to come over and make himself acquainted and say, uh, could you leave me a couple of screams? When I go to the movies and I hear a scream, I realize, yeah, I did it. That's one of my screams. No, Alfredo, it's over. I'm glad it's over. For one whole year, I've thought of nothing, lived for nothing, but to find the person who killed my husband. <laughs>